Hey, matey to you, mateys, guys and girls out there, watch me, I appreciate you. Hey guys, today we're in my kitchen as you can see, and today I am going to show you a little treat that I love to cook. It's London broil, top brown. You know, what's funny about this cut of beef is that a lot of people walk right by it because they don't know what to do with it. A lot of people think, oh, this is a roast, which you can roast it. But I'm gonna tell you, when you put a marinade on this and do it the way I do it, it's one of the most delicious tasting steaks that you will ever, ever, I mean, get for $12. I mean, this is delicious. And stick around, I'm gonna show you how to turn it into that deliciousness. Okay guys, first we're gonna start off by seasoning our London broil. Now, what we're gonna do is just simple seasoning. We're not gonna poke it and prod it and all that stuff. Just gonna hit it with a little bit of onion powder, a little bit of garlic powder, a little bit, a little bit of celery salt, a little bit of kosher salt, salt and pepper, or pepper, cracked black pepper. gonna flip that over guys flip that over and repeat wash that hand off and touch the meat all right. Now that we got her seasoned up, guess what time it is to do now? Time to pick a marinade. Well, what do we got? We got Worcestershire sauce. We got Gravy Master. This is a secret. We've got soy. And we've got some teriyaki. What would you use? What would you think would be great on this? That's right, all of them! Boom! You're gonna get them all today. We're gonna do a wet marinade for about an hour. We're gonna put this in a bag. Ta-da! Get in there. Get in there, Lord and Roy. Jeez, don't you hate Perry's wife? Anyway, now, for the wet marinade, we've got Ses or teriyaki with sesame seeds. It's going in there. Okay. Gonna drop a dump a glump of that in there. Gravy master. Boy, I'll tell you what. You want to talk about putting a brown crispy crunch on any meats you do? Marinate your steaks and then put them, rub this all over your steaks. A little bit goes a long way. Pour some out on your steaks. Rub it all in both sides. Then put it on the grill. You want to talk about unbelievable, just how that that puts a crunch and a and kind of a bark on your on your meat. You only need a little bit of it, okay? Don't go all hog wild on that. Worcestershire. Don't need to go all hog wild on this either because this adds a lot of flavor. A couple of dashes of that. Soy. Just going to add it because it's wet and. Gives you that little bit of a mommy flavor. Throw that in there. Now, what do we have? What do we have here? Well, we've got a bag of tender loving goodness that we are going to not bake, not grill, not sear in a pan. We're going to broil it, baby! It's going under the broiler. Well, it would be kind of technically grilling because our broiler is technically an upside down grill. And we are going to let this marinate for up to 45 minutes, half an hour, on the counter. And why on the counter? Because I just pulled it out of the fridge, man. I want this up to room temperature. That's going to take at least 45 minutes. So I'm, I'm going to do this while I do that. I'm going to scrunch all that marinade around in there, get it going, fire it up, squeeze all the air out that I can. And I'll be back. And when I get back, you guys better have 
your eyes on because you're going to see one heck of a London broil. Now, like I said, we're going to broil this. <clears throat> one of the rules to broiling is never shut your oven door. When you put your oven on broil, as we're going to right now, check this out. Going to hit the broil button. See, it's a 525. Turn it all the way up. Hit start. We want to definitely crack this door. Why do you crack that door? Well, here's the reason. Your oven is temperature controlled. If you're going to stick it on 525 and it hits 25, it's going to shut off the broiler, the upside down grill, what we were talking about, those coils up on top, it's going to shut them off. And remember, we don't want those to shut off. We're not worried about how hot our oven can get because we're not baking. We're just broiling. We're grilling from top to bottom, okay? So we want that coil to stay on. You wouldn't want to put stuff on your grill outside and have the, have the burner keep going on and off, on and off, on and off. You never get anything done. So leave your oven door open, leave it cracked, leave it so the heat escapes and the broiler will stay on. And you can see right now the coils, they're on, okay? They're not gonna shut off. Okay, for this London broil, we want to go down <clears throat> three racks. We're going to start on the third rack. So we're going to go one, two, three, or three, two, one, down to the bottom rack. I've got it setting on that, on that spot. And what we're going to do from there is basically take our London broil, dump it out with the marinade right onto your baking tray. Get rid of this nasty bag. Want to get it slopped around. Pull you guys up here. And this is our London broil. Okay? So that baby is going to go in right under the broiler for three minutes. And once three minutes is up, we're gonna flip it over and let it go another three minutes. So we're gonna go on the third one down, three minutes, three minutes. We're gonna pull it up to the second one. We're gonna go three minutes, three minutes. Then we're gonna pull it up to the top one to finish. Three minutes, three minutes. That way your meat isn't getting shocked. You don't stick it directly under those broilers and all of a sudden, ooh, you know, it gets hit by that unbelievable intense heat and it starts tightening up and everything. We want it kind of warming up as it's in the oven down on the lower one, those sides. Then as we get it, it warms up a little more. And then when it gets to the top, it's nice and warm. So it's not gonna tighten up on us. It's gonna crust up on that top, really nice crust. And uh, when we let it rest and we're going to be able to slice that, it's going to be unbelievable, guys. Stick around. Okay, our timer has gone off for the first session on the lowest rack. So what are we going to do? Definitely pull this up. Set it right there. Give it a flip. We're going to pull that rack. Go up to the second one, second level. Put our London broil back in. We're gonna go three more minutes. Until we flip. And there's the bell. It's time to pop her out and throw her up on the top rack. There we go. First thing first, we'll take that. Give it a little flip. We'll take our rack, yank it up here onto the top one. Put our London broil right back on to the top rack. And let her go. Three minutes. Now, if you might like it a little rare, you can go three minutes on this side, maybe two minutes on the other, and try it. 
And if it's not to your satisfaction done enough, you can go a little longer. But I found out that three minutes, that usually works. I like it a little medium rare, a little medium to medium rare. And you're probably thinking, what are you going to do with this? Well, you can slice it, put it over top of rice with some vegetables. You can make some mashed potatoes, slice it. Uh, if you have some gravy or anything you like to use for broth and have some asparagus with mashed potatoes and some slices of this. Guys, it's really, really a wonderful meat when you do it this way. I myself do it for this. I, I slice mine and cut it into little squares. Then I'll toast some bread and cut the bread into squares and I'll line it up on a, on a plate and put the meat on top of the bread. Then I'll get a little bowl or a little thing, uh, a dipping bowl, and I'll fill that with A1 and take those uh, London broil, I call them steak bites. Take them, dip them in there and eat them. Oh my golly, during a game or just any time, they're phenomenal. In fact, when I first uh, started doing this, I asked my son, he was only 12 years old. I said, hey man, do you want some uh, steak bites? And he's like, no, I don't want any. Hold on, gotta get to this. Gotta flip this back over. Gotta apologize, I shut the camera off to show you the third and final flip. But she's in there and got about, eh, probably about a minute and a half to go. Uh, the smoke detector in my house was going off, which it always does when it gets smoky or if I cook in here, like, there you go, like burgers or something, it'll start going on and off. Got the window over here open, kind of get some ventilation. Pay no attention to that uh, smoke detector. As you can see, we're not on fire, but we're cooking with fire, baby. Okay, so final three minutes is up. And it's time to do a little bit of happy time here. Let's get this bad boy out. Shut the oven off first. Pull this out. Take a look. Love and goodness. Oh yeah. Now we can shut that. We're gonna bring you guys right over here to check out this. Set her out on the cutting board and let her rest. That's gonna be delicious. Yes, it is. Gotta turn the, uh, turn the old water on to bust out that tray right there. But, can you just smell that? What do you think, guys? I'm gonna get, get out of your way so you can see it. But anyway, let's do this. Let's top it with a little bit of butter. Got some butter. Gonna run some butter over the top. Oh yeah, baby, that's what makes all these meats taste good. Look at this. Do a little bit of parsley sprinkled on it for some color. Now, the magic happens when you do this. Get a cover on that. And let that go for about 10 minutes. Let it just sit there and just soak up the butter and rest and relax. And we'll be back with the cutting of it. Well, guys, it's time. And I forgot to mention, it's December 20th, 2020 right now. And uh, Cleveland Browns play tonight, Sunday night, football at 8.30. So 8.20 on ESPN. Some of you other guys, fans from other teams, you know what your team's doing. But let's check this out. See that? Beautiful. I'm going to give this... Just a little bit of cut on the bias, a little angled cut. Look at this. Nice thin pieces. If you like a medium rare, that's pretty much perfect for you. Do you like that? Do you like that piece? Is it too rare? Is it not rare enough? Is it just perfect? I don't know. Let's give it a taste. 
Mm. Oh yeah. Mm. Oh yeah. So I've got over here some A1 sauce. Mm. Dip it. Mm. Grip it, dip it, and rip it, baby. That's delicious, guys. Perfect texture, perfect taste, perfect length of marinade. You could even go overnight if you want. But I'll tell you, don't let a London broil ever, ever, ever make you think, hmm, I can't buy that because I don't know how to cook it. Now you know. Now you know. If you're cutting it like I did and it becomes a little, looks a little too rare, turn your broiler back on. Put it back under there. Probably the second rack. Put it back under there for like uh, three minutes aside or four minutes aside until you think it, it's where you want it to be. Take it out, cut it. Let it rest. Anyway, you can't go wrong with this, guys. I'm telling you, this is something else. This is a beautiful piece of meat. And this was Angus beef, not certified Angus, but Angus beef, all in that, you know. And it is unbelievably delicious. Mm -hmm, baby. Got nothing else for you guys. Go Browns tonight. Hey, enjoy the rest of your day and Sunday. Make this recipe. I love you guys. Subscribe. Got more things coming up. Anyway, until next time, Maydays out of here.